way. That way. You are now watching Create a Steady Hustle with Liquid Cash. Cheers, what it is, what it ain't, it's yours truly, Liquid Cash. I need it all out the stash, a.k.a. Money Making Mitch. Hide ya. Uh, y'all already know what it is, man. It's a new day. It's a new episode. Y'all know we coming. It's the host with the most, yours truly. But I got my man with me, you heard? Prince, say what up to the people, man. Come over here, say what up. Now, nah, man, we got Prince in the building, man. He chilling right now. He got his perm done. You feel me? What's up? We're going to give you a treat, baby. We'll give you a treat since you've been a good boy. You're going to give you a treat. You want one more treat? You're going to chill out? You're going to chill out for the whole episode? You're going to have a good time? You're going to relax? Ease your mind? Okay. I'll give you one more. Now you got to be good, all right? You just got to relax, stay to the side, and just chill. Okay? Listen, man, we're going to have a classic episode. Y'all know what it is, man. Y'all know I'm coming. Every time I put out content, it's always quality over quantity. I'm not going to talk just because I got lips. Anything I say is going to be some positive, inspirational, motivational shit. You know what I mean? So I want y'all to just vibe with me. Relax, take it easy. Whatever you're doing, I need you to stop whatever you're doing for a second. And it's going to be a probably an hour episode. If I go over a little bit, over an hour, bear with me, man. You know what it is, man. I'm just trying to get into it, you dig? Sometimes I got a lot to say, you feel me? But I want y'all to notice, man, as soon as y'all log on and click this video, make sure y'all subscribe right away. Press the like button. Also, subscribe to your boy, you dig? Do not... Watch this entire video and you do not subscribe to the platform. I'm trying to get in the algorithm. I'm trying to grow my page. I need your assistance. I need your help to grow the page to take it to where it need to be, man. Y'all know ain't nobody putting out content like me. Ain't nobody doing what I do. So stop playing yourself and press the like button and subscribe and hit the notification button. Don't play yourself. Make sure you do that because you know what it is. Y'all know I'm coming. Anything I do is quality over quantity. So we not going to play no games, all right? Don't play yourself and don't try to play me by not supporting the platform. Y'all know what it is. And if you got a question, man, you hit up the Super Chat. You know what I mean? Donate to the page or hit up, uh, you know what I mean, liquidcast.com. Buy something. Get a book or something. Get the audio book. Get a shirt. You might see something you like. Make sure you check out the site, all right? Liquidcast.com. Support your boy. We out here trying to break barriers and just move mountains with this podcast thing, you dig? And I don't even like to call it a podcast, man. I call it a show. Because anything I do, like I said, is lights, camera, action, man. You feel me? So, uh, like, I, like I always tell y'all, man, I like to, um, Prince, you good? Prince, you all right? You chilling? I ain't got no more food, baby. I ain't got no more food. You know what I mean? We ain't going to waste no time, man. We're going to get right into it. We're going to start off with the swag report. Y'all know I like to stay fresh. Y'all know I like to talk about what I got on because it's important because this is this segment is for the fellas, you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes the fellas need some tip on how to get their drip right, you dig? Right now, I got on that Louis Vuitton t-shirt, you feel me? That green, because y'all know green is for the money, you dig? And I ain't taking Bishop Don Juan's slogan because he usually say green is for the money, gold is for the honey. But green is for the money because, you know, it's prosperity for me. Green is my color for the year. Matter of fact, for the past two years, you dig? My favorite color is red, but right now, I'm on that green thing, you dig? And that green is definitely, you know what I mean? It's bringing a lot of wealth in my life, and that's how I'm moving, and that's how I'm rocking. I got on the white pants, because why? Like I said again, Prince, you're gonna have to relax. Stop trying to mess up my drip report, you dig? You ain't got no clothes on, so you jealous, huh? You ain't got no clothes on, so you wanna uh, come over here and mess up my drip report. You gotta relax, all right? I got, I got on some white pants, you know what I mean? I got these from Zara, you know what I mean? You know Zara is always a dope-ass spot to go get you a little one-piece at, you know what I mean? I got these from Zara, so I know a lot of fellas out there, y'all shop at Zara, I already know. That's why I stopped really shopping there, because all the niggas being there now, shopping at Zara, trying to find something that's right and affordable. I ain't mad at y'all. I see y'all doing y'all thing, but I stopped shopping in there a long time ago. These are some pants I just... You know, I had these for a while, man. Sometimes I keep clothes for a long time because I take my shit to the cleaners. I don't put them in the, you know what I mean, the, laun uh, the laundry mat and get it washed. I don't put it in the dryer. I take it to the cleaners, man. Anytime you wear something that is, you know, that you like and that you feel like you spend a 
good amount of money on, take it to the cleaners, all right? It's going to last a little bit longer. Of course. And I got to let y'all know what I got on my feet, man. I got on them Alexander McQueen. You dig? Alexander McQueen. Who cleaner than me and my Alexander McQueen? You dig? Um, Come on, man. These are classic. These are fly. Y'all know what it is, man. You know, I got the touch of green in the back. Just slightly. Not too much. You know what I mean? Just, you know, you got to coordinate the bottoms with the top. That's how I do it. You feel me? Anytime I get some sneakers and I'm getting fresh, y'all always try to coordinate your sneakers with your top that's how i that's how i you know what i mean i like to do it like that i don't know how y'all like to do it but that's just my my flavor anytime i put on some sneakers they gotta coordinate with the f entire drip you know what i mean unless i got on some all white air force ones they go with anything you dig i could have put on some all white air force ones with these but that would have been cheating myself that would have been too easy i'm a fly nigga so i gotta make it a little bit more challenging so i had to go find me something that really matches with the entire outfit from top to bottom you dig so a lot of you niggas that's lazy and don't know how to put it together y'all go get y'all some all white air force ones the all white Air Force Ones and make it a little bit more easier for y'all if y'all don't really got that type of time to be looking for different sneakers. Me, I got the time, man. I don't mind going online and looking for what I like and copping something that I really like that's going to stand out. See, it's all about the details. I've been telling y'all, man, if you look good, you feel good. So it's important that you understand you always want to look your best. Anywhere you go, put on that shit. That's going to make you feel good because once you feel good, that brings prosperity and abundance in your life. Everything that's going to go on in your life is going to be a good outcome because you're feeling good. You're putting out that good vibration. That's why I say stop wearing them old ass clothes that you know belong to being the trash. Stop rocking them old ass shirts, them old ass jeans, them old ass sneakers. Go get you some new clothes with new vibration connected to it and when you wear it you're gonna feel a little bit different trust me i already know you dig and my swag niggas out there y'all know what it is man that's why we like to get fresh every day because every day we want to feel good you know what i mean so anytime i go outside i like to look my best and uh on a side note right on my last episode i was wearing a merlot suit you know i was fly dip down dapper you dig what i'm saying i had to <laughs> Yeah, Bottega frames, the master, you know what I mean? Little trinkets I had on my suit. It was a fly suit, man. Definitely one of one of a kind, you know what I mean? I had the Merlot turtleneck. I had the Merlot suit. I had the Merlot shoes to match. I was Merlot from top to bottom. Niggas couldn't fuck with that fit, you that dig? Then I went online and I was scrolling, right? I was scrolling online because, you know, sometimes I, I be on the internet and I be watching certain things. And I saw Mace had on... A similar suit he had on the blue the royal blue turtleneck I'm gonna put it up on the screen so y'all can see it real quick he had on the royal blue turtleneck with the royal blue suit you know what I mean and um let me know man is it a coincidence or Mason swagger jack in my style man you know what I mean cuz see the way I put that together I know niggas don't be thinking like that man cuz usually when niggas put on a blue suit they put on a white shirt and a blue tie or, you know, some colorful tie to match it, you dig? And that's how they rock out. They don't really put on the turtleneck that matches the same color of the suit. If they put on a red suit, they usually wear a black turtleneck. If they put on a black um, uh, vest or they put on a black sports jacket, they'll put on a black, you know, turtleneck, but that's about it. They not gonna really far out, go far left and say, let me get a Merlot color, color suit and put on that maroon, you know what I mean? Turtleneck. They not going to say, let me get a royal blue suit and put on a maroon, a, a royal blue turtleneck. They really don't rock it like that, you dig? So in my mind, I think he was inspired by me. It might have been a coincidence. It might have been a coincidence, but I think in my mind, he was definitely inspired by my fit. And to my defense, I also like to say a lot of times these stylists and these celebrities that's out there, they'll get all of their style from people that's not popular or people that's on the rise and coming up. Don't think they don't see everything that's going on. So a lot of times they will get their styles and their ideas from the young female or the young male that's coming up trying to get out there, you dig? And they feel like nobody knows them yet so we can 
take a little bit of this and take a little bit of that. They've been doing that for years. They've been doing that with music. Anytime you submit your music or you put your demo into the record label, they would take that particular song or take the likeness of that song, remix it, make it their own, and put out a hit record from your idea. So they've been doing this for a long time, you know what I mean? They'll, they take ideas. That's 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 the that's the that's one of their models, you know what I mean? So, and that leads me to tell y'all about this book called Steal Like an Artist. If you haven't read that book, you need to get that book. It's called Steal Like an Artist, and it will show you and tell you, uh, elaborate on how most great artists always steal. You know what I mean? We have to get our inspiration from somewhere. So that brings me to the title of this particular episode. It's called Who's Gonna Motivate the Motivators? I'm a motivator, but always looking for people to motivate me. You dig? So I also want to get back to, like I said, that book, Steal Like an Artist, is a dope book. It's definitely going to inspire you and it's going to motivate you and it's going to give you a sense of awareness to let you know that nothing is new under the sun. Everything has already been done. You dig? And I also want to say this, man. Ain't no shot to Mace. I look up to Mace when I was coming up. If you was listening to music back then in that era and you didn't look up to Mace or you wasn't inspired by Mace, you were goddamn lie. Mace was one of the flyest niggas doing it. You dig? You know what I mean? All the guys wanted to be like him. All the girls liked him. Mace is really doing his thing. You know what I mean? He's legendary status. Don't get it twisted. No shot at Mace. If I inspired his fashion, that's cool because he's been inspiring me throughout all my life. So if I could return a favor and give him some sort of inspiration, and I'm not saying that he might have jacked it. It might have been his stylist jacking it. You know what I mean? But either way, Mace is a legend. He's been inspiring me throughout my life. So, you know what I mean? Like I said, again, if I could return the favor and give him some inspiration and, you know what I mean, inspire that royal blue suit from top to bottom, then, man, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's all love, you dig? That's how we coming. That's how we bringing it, man. We trying to motivate the motivators, man. Like I said, again, this episode is about who's going to motivate the motivators, man. You know what I mean? I want y'all to let that sink in for a second. We interrupt this program for a quick, short commercial break. I know you're enjoying the content, but listen, I got to plug the book, The Power of Thought. This is something that you need in your life. You can think your way to a rich and prosperous life. It's your thoughts and your feelings that create abundance for you. Change your mind and you can change your life. I ain't trying to tell you what to think. I'm trying to teach you how to think. So get a copy of the book, The Power of Thought. If you don't got all day and you ain't trying to read a 300-page book, this is short and sweet. It's going to take you where you need to be. Also, for the people that don't read, I got the audio book as well. Everything is going to be in the description below. Support the book. Support the platform. Y'all know what it is. The Power of Thought. Yours truly. Look what now back to the episode. Cheers. So yeah, man, who's gonna motivate the motivators? Prince, I'm gonna need you to relax, all right? Stop all the crying. Stop all the whining. I ain't got no more food for you. We don't got nothing else for you, all right? You're not going nowhere. You're gonna watch the whole show. You're gonna enjoy the whole show, all right? You're gonna enjoy the whole show. You wanna say something to the mic? Because it look like you wanna talk to them. You wanna say something? Huh? You wanna say something? You ain't got nothing to say, right? So relax your mind. Listen, man, check this out, man. Who's going to motivate the motivators, man? That's why I stay fly, man. Because I want to motivate the streets. Anywhere I go, I want to motivate people. When they look at me, I want them to see something that they inspired to be. You know what I mean? Because you can pay for school, but you can't buy a class, baby. You feel me? My taste buds is different. So if a nigga swagger jack my drip, he's not going to do it like me. Because I got a certain taste level that most people don't have. Some niggas like cotton, I like silk. That's just me. My taste level is always the highest level of fabric. You dig? And if something higher than silk, then that's what I am. You know what I mean? My taste level is different. That's why most people can't do what I do. Because my level of taste differentiates me from everybody else. You dig? So if you see other niggas' podcasts, it's never going to be the way I do it because they not gonna put in the time and the effort that it's gonna take to get the right look and have the right angles and have the right shots and the background and everything set up right and the lighting looking immaculate so my skin can glow, you know what I mean? And I can vibrate through the screen and you can look and be like, damn, you inspired to be like that man. 
You feel me? So I want to motivate. I want to inspire. That's why my content is not based on gossip. I don't talk about gossip. I don't think about gossip. And that's not the route I want to take. You feel me? If you see on the, if you look on the internet, man, 90% of that shit is bullshit. A lot of these shows are coming up now where they having these reality shows and 90% is bullshit. Girls fighting each other, niggas fighting each other, gay people fighting each other. It's like super reckless. You know what I mean? They showing black people in a bad light. That's why we got to have a balance and we got to have people like me out there and y'all got to push people like me out there so we can have that balance and we can have good positive content. You feel me? Because there's so much trash out there. It's like people got the opportunity to create something and they always create negativity. And I understand negativity sells faster than positivity, but you got to understand, man, you want to put yourself out there in, a, in the right way because once it's on the internet, it's out there forever. So why would you want to, you know what I mean, promote yourself in a negative way or let people see you in a negative light? You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, man, that's a representation of you. And when people Google you and they look up your name and they look into who you are and they see your past actions, that's going to stop you from getting millions. That could stop you from getting to the bad because people don't want to be associated or do business with people that lacks character. You understand? So it's important. Don't sell your character and your integrity for a dollar. You always got to make sure that you always present yourself in a positive way and in a positive light. You dig? Because it's going to go long, a long way. Your face card is going to get you in doors that money won't. That's why I always do good business. I don't backdoor nobody. I always keep it 100 because your face card is going to get you in doors that money won't. That's why I can go in any state. And anywhere I go, my face card is always good. From the Bahamas to New York to Atlanta to Vegas to any place I've ever lived that my face card is always good because I always did good business and I always kept it real with anybody that I did business with. Or even the niggas that I was just friends with that I didn't even do no business with, we always kept uh, mutual respect for each other, you dig? So I want to express that and let y'all know, man. Don't sell yourself short just for clout. Don't say nothing, don't do nothing just because you're trying to get a recognition or you're trying to get a buzz or you're trying to get some traction to your Instagram or your YouTube. Remember, how you present yourself is going to speak volumes. And if you're putting out good content, the people is going to come. They're going to support that, you dig? So I need y'all to support my platform. Like, subscribe, hit the notification button, and support what I got going on. Now let's get into it, man. Who's going to motivate the motivators, man? If you show me one broke nigga, I'll show you three reasons on why he's broke, man. Important reasons on why he's broke. Number one, he lacked focusness. See, he too busy doing everything than what he need to be doing, you dig? He don't have a magnificent obsession with becoming and being a better person. That's the number one reason why most people are broke out there. They lack focusness. You got to be focused, man, at all times, you dig? You got to ignore all the distractions. Every day, all day, there's someone trying to get in your life to distract you. Number two, huh, this is very important. I want y'all to really hear me clear. Number two, the reason why niggas be broke out there is this. They lack consistency, man. You know what I mean? You got to do the right thing long enough until you see the results you want. They lack consistency. See, everybody want that quick buck. Everybody want to cheat the grind. Everybody don't want to put in the work. But you can't cheat the grind, so why waste time, man? Get to it now because a good plan executed now is better than a perfect plan executed later. You dig? Number three, they lack ambition. See, life is full of problems, but your ambition is going to help you to resolve and solve all of these problems that life brings to you. You know what I mean? You can escape problems. You cannot escape problems. Life is all about solving problems. But your ambition, your desire, your drive is going to make sure that you solve every problem and you triumph over any obstacle and any adversity that come in your life. You dig? These are the three number one reasons on why niggas be broke out there. And I'm going to give y'all a fourth one just because I like y'all.
All my life I heard the expressions, you gotta fake it to make it. But I never really subscribed to that concept cause I believe you gotta think it to make it. See whatever the mind of man can conceive and bring itself to believe he can achieve. Change your mind and you can change your life. Take a whiff, I'm the sh uh, I'm the black rich you rich. Uh, do it all on my own. Uh, I ain't never need a uh, cause it's all in the wrist. Uh, she in love with the sniff. Uh, I'm in love with the bricks. Uh, like I'm short, like I'm dick. What? Make a bust like the rhyme. What? Only hit it one time. You know what I mean? I'm gonna give y'all a fourth one. Number four. Why these niggas be broke out there? Quite frankly, man, these niggas are scared, man. That's what it is, man. These niggas are scared. They scared of success. They scared to make a decision. They scared to take a risk. They scared to make a move. See, when I was coming up, man, there wasn't a hustle that was out there that I was scared to try. I didn't give a damn. Coming from the Bahamas to New York, man, I was in survivor mode 24-7. You know what I mean? I got to get right to let y'all know what's, what's really going on. You know what I'm saying? I got to get right. Let me get right. Let me get myself right. You know what I mean? Let me get myself right. See, coming up in New York, man, I was on survivor mode. It wasn't nothing out there that I wasn't willing to try, man. I don't care, man, whatever they was doing. You know what I mean? Are we, are we selling something? Whatever they selling, man, I ain't going to incriminate myself. I ain't going to tell y'all what I was doing, you dig? But I'm going to let y'all know this, man. Whatever hustle they had that was out when I was moving in the streets, I was trying it. I was never scared, man. You dig? If we scamming, <laughs> we scamming. If we selling drugs, that's what we doing. We selling drugs. You know what I mean? Now, I'm not telling y'all to commit no crimes now. I'm not saying commit any crimes. I'm just telling you, a lot of these niggas broke because they scared. You know what I mean? Like I said, when I was coming up, man, because I was an immigrant, I was on survivor mode 24-7. There wasn't a hustle made that I didn't try because I didn't care. I had nothing to lose. You know what I mean? I had nothing to lose, man. I came all the way from the Bahamas, man. I got to figure this shit out. Ain't nobody going to give it to me. I already knew that. You know what I mean? I already knew that. So whatever they was doing in the streets, all my partners and the people that I was meeting, whatever they was doing in the streets, I was willing to take the risk. You know what I mean? And some of the things that I was doing, I wouldn't even put my homeboys on because the risk was so big. I didn't want nobody to go to jail because of me. So anytime that I was taking a chance, I did these things myself. See, a lot of niggas in jail right now because they scared to move alone. You know what I mean? When they go to bust a move, they call in this one and that one. They want this one to look out. They want this one to watch. They want this one to do the job. Nah, man, stop being a pussy and you go ahead and do the dirt by yourself. Do your dirt all by your lonely. You know what I mean? Because you ain't going to never tell on yourself if you're smart. You feel me? So I ain't never told on myself. You dig? That's why I ain't never went to jail for none of the things I did. You dig? Not because I was smarter than anybody else. That's because God favored me. Now, see, God favors some of us and he doesn't favor most of us. Well, let me say that again. I got away with a lot of shit, not because I was smarter than anybody else. It was really because God was on my side every step of the way. And anything that I did, I took God with me. You know what I mean? Whether it was wrong or right, I always took God with me in anything that I did. You know what I mean? I never went with the devil. See, a lot of niggas... <laughs> go to jail because when they do wrong they doing it with bad intentions see i was a bad guy with good intentions you feel me i was kind of like the robin hood i wasn't doing things just because i had a selfish need nah i was helping people in the process i was giving back to people in the process whether that be friends family or strangers you know what i mean so a lot of niggas do things with negative intentions. That's why they end up in jail. And they think negative, so you get negative results. You dig what I'm saying? So I want to let y'all know, man. A lot of niggas are broke right now because they scared. Now, I'm not telling y'all to commit no crimes and take no chances out there that's going to put you in jail and take away your liberty in society. I'm just saying, man, don't be afraid to take risks. Don't be afraid to quit your job and go ahead and, and sell whatever you need to sell to get what you need to get. You know what I mean? And what I mean by selling, hopefully, is a legal product. I'm not talking about selling drugs. We in Las Vegas right now, man. It's hot as a motherfucker. It's about to be summertime any minute. It's about to be 110 degrees. If you go out there and sell bottles of water on the street corner, man, you're going to make some money. You know what I mean? You're going to make some money. And you'll be surprised. You'll make more money 
than you do at the current job that you got right now. Now, you might not have no benefits. That's okay. You might not get no benefits. You feel me? But at the end of the day, you know what you got? You got freedom. You know what I mean? You got the hustle. You got that ambition. And what you're going to learn on that journey, see, that's going to bring so much prosperity in your life because success is all about the person you become. You know what I mean? See, I like the way Jim Ron put it. He said, work hard on yourself, then you do at your job. Because if you work hard on your job, you can make a living. But if you work hard on yourself, you can make a fortune. See, a lot of people are not working hard on themselves, man. And that be the problem right there, you dig? You're not putting in the work. Success is attracted by the person you become. So that's important. You make sure that you're an attractive person so you can attract the things that you desire in your life. You dig what I'm saying? So listen, man, we're going to motivate y'all today. And I want to let y'all know, man, those are the top reasons of why a lot of niggas broke, man. They scared to take a chance. They scared to take a risk. But like I said, again, we living in a time right now, man, we got the internet, right? We got a lot of different avenues and a lot of different ways we can get money. So we don't got to break no laws. We got to do no crimes because there's so many ways out there right now in 2024 and how to get money that you don't have to really break no laws. Now, the money ain't going to come fast like you think it's going to come now. It's going to come real slow in the beginning because you got to, you know what I mean, create this snowball effect. And we like to always, you know, try to find a way to get some quick buck. But that quick buck could land you in jail because a lot of you niggas, like I said, your luck is bad. Y'all niggas don't got good luck, man. You know what I mean? It's, you could steal a, a, a Snickers out of a, a you know what I mean, a, a convenience store and you go to jail. That's how bad some of you niggas' luck is. You could take a Tic Tac from somewhere and you get caught. You know what I mean? That's how bad some of you niggas' luck is, man. Where you got a nigga like... Someone else or somebody like me, I could fuck around and steal a million dollars and I don't get caught. You know what I mean? Because my luck is better than yours. Now, I'm not going to say I'm not going to never do that. I'm not going to never steal a million dollars from nowhere. You dig? But I'm just giving y'all an example. You dig? Some of you niggas luck are so bad because you got so much negative energy on you. It don't matter what you do. You're not going to see the results you're looking for. It's going to end up in a negative outcome but you got to change your vibration why because your currency is connected to your frequency it's very important see i keep a little things around me that keep prosperity with me you know what i mean this right here is my little jade stone i call this my prosperity stone you know what i mean you dig i went to a crystal shop this was calling me and i said man i'm feeling the energy of this little crystal right here this little jade stone you dig so i took it to my jeweler i said man put some diamonds around this real quick man and i keep it with me you dig what i'm saying now this might this stone might not be doing nothing this stone might not be bringing no positive energy into my life but i think it is so <laughs> if i think it is then that's what it's doing you dig this is my prosperity stone so sometimes you got to keep little things around you that keep you in a positive mind state that make you feel abundant that makes you think abundant so you have abundance in your life you dig what i'm saying see i was having a conversation the other day with my brother jamar right and he told me that sometimes when you see a nigga down you got to leave him there because there's a reason that he's down you know what i mean because a lot of times when people are not doing good in life, it's a reason why they're not doing good in life, man. And especially if that's a person that you help throughout your life. You know what I mean? Like a friend that came up with you, that you've been helping all throughout your life, and he's still down to this day. Sometimes you got to leave him there because some people are so negative and they have such bad luck, they'll befriend you just to drag you down with them. You know what I mean? I'm going to say that again because that's heavy. Like I said again, he said, if you got a friend that you've been helping, right, and it's 2024 and he's still down on his face, down on his luck, he don't got to pop the piss in or a window to throw it out of. Sometimes you got to leave him there because some people would connect to you and gravitate towards you just to drag you down with them. You know what I mean? And a lot of people are not being blessed because of the people that are around them that has negative energy and negative spirits that's connected to them. You feel me? Plus, not only that, those type of people have to go through the storm so they can evolve to the next level in their life. See, everything that we go through is a problem that we got to solve and something that we got to learn along the way. You dig? Everything is for your growth and development. You feel me? Sometimes when you help people too prematurely and the reason why they go back down to the bottom is because... You came in and infringe on their life 
and you stopping their process and their growth and development. Everybody got stages and levels that they got to go through in life so they can learn and evolve and be a better person. See, the only reason that I am who I am today is because of the things that I've went through. If somebody have halted me or stopped some of the things that I've went through, then I might have not been the person you see today. All of those things shaped and mold me to, to be the person that I am. So some people are going through the storm because they got to grow from that and become bigger and better. Not saying they not going to be something in life. All I'm saying is this. If you're down right now, just understand that better days are coming. All you got to do is think positive and understand you got to grow through it. Don't just go through it. You dig? I hope that don't go over your head, man. Soak that in and really overstand that. You dig? Because everything that I went through shaped and mold the man that you see today. And I wouldn't change none of it for nothing. And I went through a lot, man. But everything that I ever went through, I overcome it all. You know what I mean? I always thought positive and I always kept going, man. You know what I mean? My ambition helped me to solve some of these problems that I was having throughout my life. You know what I mean? Especially, like I said again, we interrupt this program for a quick, short commercial break. I know you're enjoying the content, but listen, I got to plug the book, The Power of Thought. This is something that you need in your life. You can think your way to a rich and prosperous life. It's your thoughts and your feelings that create abundance for you. Change your mind and you can change your life. I ain't trying to tell you what to think. I'm trying to teach you how to think. So get a copy of the book, The Power of Thought. If you don't got all day and you ain't trying to read a 300-page book, this is short and sweet. It's going to take you where you need to be. Also, for the people that don't read, I got the audio book as well. Everything is going to be in the description below. Support the book. Support the platform. Y'all know what it is. The Power of Thought. Yours truly. Look what can. Now back to the episode. Cheers. When you coming up as an immigrant, man, like I said, it ain't no, ah, man, it's a different type of feeling because, you know what I mean? When you coming up as an immigrant, you free, but you don't feel free because you can't do the things that most people out there is doing. You know what I mean? So you, you're able to drive a car, but you got to be easy because you might not have the driver's license, you know what I mean? Because you ain't got the documentation to get one. So for a long time, I was driving illegally without a license when I was coming up and younger, you know what I mean? And I remember one time I was driving huh, my side chick for a tourist, right? Well, she wasn't my side chick, she was my main chick and I was dating her cousin, but that's another story. Check this out, I was driving her blue Ford Taurus, you dig? Now, I didn't have no license, I just had some fake IDs in my pockets. Like I said again, I was an immigrant, I was on a move, I was on survival mode, doing whatever I could do to get where I need to go, you dig? So, now, she didn't have a, a, her registration or insurance, so what I did is I took a license plate off of another car and I put it on my car, you dig? And I was driving through Far Rockaway, Queens, just moving throughout my day. And one day, a police pulled me over and I'm, psh, damn, I'm shitting bricks. I'm scared as a motherfucker, you dig? Because this time, I was definitely scared of the police because I was on, you know what I mean? I didn't have my paperwork right. So, they pulled me over. He asked me for my license and registration. I go on my wallet, fake like I was pulling out my license. I know I didn't have no license. So, you know, the police is very observant. So he looked inside my wallet. He noticed a license in my wallet, but it wasn't real. So he asked me to pull it out. So I had to pull out that particular license because I didn't want to pull it out, but he asked me to pull it out. So I said, hi, right, fuck it. So I pulled it out. He looked at it. He see it was a fake license. And of course, he took me to jail, and I spent about a couple of days in Central Bookings. And my aunt had to come in, identify me. Basically, she had to bring my passport so I could show identification, and they was able to let me out, right? But that was one of those experiences that I went through that, I, that, that, that kind of, you know, made me start to think about life in a certain way, and I had to get my shit together. You know what I mean? I had to get my shit right. You feel me? Because... One of those situations could have shipped me right back to the Bahamas. You know what I mean? That situation could have made me be deported and sent right back to the Bahamas. So I was blessed that that, that didn't transpire and end up in a, in, in, in a negative way where I was, you know, deported back to the Bahamas and not able to come back here for another 10 years. You feel me? But these are the things that you go through when you're an immigrant and you're coming up inside, you know what I mean, New York City. You feel me? 
Like I said again, man, my aunt had to come there, bail me out, show my identification with my passport. They let me go. At this time, they wasn't really tripping too much on immigrants, especially if you didn't do no big crime. That wasn't a huge crime, but that was warranted enough for him to investigate and look into my situation, and I could have been deported. But like I said, God favors me. My luck is good. So I want any immigrant out there to understand this, right? I know the struggle that you're going through. I know what you what you're facing. I know you want survival mode. I know you're going through it all. You feel, you know what I mean? You feel like you're free, but you're not free. You know what I mean? Because you're free from the country that you came from, but you're not free in America. So I want you to move, move in the right way. You know what I mean? Move in the right way. Understand this, man. Keep to yourself. Connect yourself with people that want to see you win. Don't tell everybody your business because not everybody's your friend. Some people will get into your business just so they can snitch on you and have your ass out of here. You feel me? So... I understand what every immigrant that comes from the Bahamas, come from Jamaica, come from Guatemala, come from, from wherever they at in the world. I understand what they go through because I went through it, you dig? And it's a survival spirit that we come with. That's why a lot of immigrants come to America and we succeed and we prevail and we uh, use our ambition to be, do, and have whatever we desire. You know what I mean? Because ain't nothing is going to stop us especially when we come from a place that's way poorer than the places that we have now. What I mean by that is this. When I was coming up in the Bahamas, our ghetto was really the ghetto. You know what I mean? When I came to America and I seen projects, I was like, oh, these are like castles. This ain't that bad. I looked at the projects as a castle compared to the ghettos in the Bahamas. You feel me? Our ghettos are shacks. Our ghettos are like... You don't have, you know what I mean, uh, a cement on the floors. Our ghettos, the buildings are breaking down. There's prostitutes. There's crackheads. There's everything under the sun. There's mutts and uh, all kind of dogs running around all over the place. Babies running around the house with no pampers on. There's uh, niggas getting killed over here, getting killed over there. So when I came to America and I seen... A projects for the first time, I was like, oh man, this is a castle. Y'all niggas got brick walls and concrete and shit. Y'all got, y'all got everything, man. Y'all got corner stores and y'all motherfucking projects. Y'all got everything. Now, the niggas in America, they look at the project as, shit, this is a horrible place to be. And I understand because that's all they see. You feel me? But coming from the Bahamas, man, if you ask anybody about the ghetto in Freeport, Bahamas, Nigga, the ghetto is really a ghetto. The ghetto in America is a little bit different than the ghettos in these third world countries and these Caribbean islands, man. It's definitely not the same, you dig? So a lot of y'all need to appreciate where y'all at. Now, I'm not saying y'all need to stay there. I'm not saying that y'all don't need to come up out of that predicament and that situation. I'm just saying it ain't as bad as you think it is. Trust me, people out there got it worse. And I had it worse, man. So all my immigrants out there, I want y'all to hold your head, stay strong, understand. Listen, man, it's going to be a brighter day. Keep on moving forward. Make sure you use your ambition to take you out of the circumstances you in. Like I said, I relate to y'all. I understand how it feels when you are free, but you don't feel free. You know what I mean? Just because the limitation that's placed on your life because you in America. Now, we happy to be in America, like I said again, because we can do and have anything we desire because America is the land of the free. Well, at least they, you know what I mean, promote it that way. You know what I mean? But like I said again, I had to learn the hard way. It ain't the city of dreams. It's a city of schemes. You know what I mean? So you got to understand either you're going to get, you know what I mean, with the program or you're going to get, you get left behind. You dig? Well, let me tell y'all a story about the Lumberjack Brothers, right? These was two brothers that worked at a particular job. All they did all day was cut wood, right? The younger brother came to the older brother and said, man, I want to place a friendly bet. I want to bet you I can cut more wood than you this week. The older brother looked at him and said, shit, I bet you can't. Well, the younger brother said, shit, I know I could. So they placed a friendly bet. But the younger brother thought he was slick. He figured he'll come to work an hour early, don't take no lunch break, leave an hour late, and he was going to be able to cut more wood than his older brother. But his older brother came to work at 9 o'clock, cut until 12, took an hour lunch break, then cut until 5, and still was able to cut more wood than his younger brother. Now, this was going on for about a couple of days now. They get to the end of the bet. And the younger brother started watching and started getting upset because he's like, 
damn, I can't figure out how is he cut more wood than me. And I'm actually not taking a lunch break and I'm leaving later than him. And he's still able to cut more wood than me. Right. So the younger brother approached the older brother and said, man, listen, man, I don't get what's going on. I don't know how you doing it. How you cut more wood than me? And the older brother said, man, I've been watching you. I see you over there struggling and I'm running laps around you. And the reason I think I could run laps around you is because when I come to work at nine, I cut until 12 and I take an hour lunch break. And on this hour lunch break, I take a little nap. So I'm well rested. I eat. So I'm fueling my body. And most importantly, most importantly, I sharpen my ax. See, a lot of y'all out there are confusing movement with progress. See, it's all about think and grow rich, not work hard and grow rich. See, I'm going to repeat that again. A lot of y'all out there is confusing movement with progress. Y'all think it's all about work hard and you're going to get rich. Nah, Napoleon Hill titled the book Think and Grow Rich for a reason. It's think and grow rich, not work hard and grow rich, man. You know what I mean? You got to sharpen your axe. Your axe is your brain. So you always got to put positive things inside of the mind mental. You dig? See, you always got to be working out that brain muscle. You know what I mean? See, he thought he was able to cut more wood than his brother because he was working longer hours and he wasn't taking a lunch break. Not understanding he's cutting with a dull axe. So you're not able to do more than me because I'm sharpening my ax. I'm able to run through those wood with no problem. Plus I'm well rested because I took a nap and I ate and I energized my body. You feel me? And I didn't eat nothing to lower my vibration. I eat something that was gonna fuel me in a positive way, you dig? So he was able to cut more ax in his brother with no problem because he's putting the right things in his body. He's taking the right amount of rest and he's sharpening his ax. So he's sharpening his brain. You feel me? A lot of y'all are not engaging in a productive routine. A routine of reading books, listening to audio books throughout the day. You know what I mean? Talking to like-minded people that's on the journey to get the bag. You feel me? And also, last but not least, you watching documentaries of legendary people that came before you that left their footprints on America, man. There's a lot of legendary people that came before us that left their footprints on this soil, man. Do your research. You got to watch and read autobiographies, biographies, and documentaries of people that came in America and made something of themselves. All my life I heard the expressions, you got to fake it to make it. But I never really subscribed to that concept because I believe you got to think it to make it. See, whatever the mind of man can conceive and bring itself to believe, he can achieve. Change your mind, and you can change your life. Take a whiff, I'm the sh- uh, I'm the black richy rich. Uh, do it all on my own. Uh, I ain't never need a b- uh, Cause it's all in the wrist. Uh, she in love with the sniff. Uh, I'm in love with the bricks. Uh, like I'm short, like I'm thick. What? Make a bust like the rhyme. What? Only hit it one time. A lot of monumental people in our past did amazing things. So there's no reason why you can't do amazing things. There's no reason why you can't be the next this or the next that or the first you. There should be no reason why, man. Every time I watch a documentary of Marcus Garvey, I get inspired. A documentary from Martin Luther King, I get inspired. A documentary from Malcolm X, I get inspired. You know what I mean? A documentary from Sidney Poitier, I get inspired. I got these people portrait painted in my guest room because I want to see them and I want to be inspired every time I look at their portrait because I know if they could come into America and create, you know what I mean, some of the... You know, life-changing events and the life-changing things in America. I know I can, man. And these people that I'm naming are foreigners. See, so I want you to understand, man. Immigrants have been coming to America for decades and been setting a mark and changing American history forever. Marcus Garvey's from Jamaica. Sidney Poitier's from the Bahamas. You understand? One of the first black actors to win the Academy Award. Marcus Garvey is the foundation for all of the things that you see today. The FOI, the, uh, you know what I mean? The Black Panthers. All the people that came after Marcus Garvey and started a movement, 
They got that idea and they got that thought process from Marcus Garvey planting the seed. So I want you to understand, man, every immigrant out there that's dealing with adversity, you got to go back, check your history, find out the people that came to America and made something of themselves. That's going to give you that drive and that motivation you need. So we got to look for the motivation and the inspiration everywhere we can find it to keep us going. You understand? Because like I said, again, coming to another man's country, it can be a scary thing. But I want to let y'all know it's possible for you to make it in America or make it any way you decide to go. You know what I mean? It's possible because there's people who've done it before you. So anything you put your mind to and you put your grind to, you can achieve. Just keep on going. Keep on pushing forward. Don't let nothing stop you. You might not have your paperwork right now. You might not have all the things you need right now to get the job you want. But keep pushing forward. Make the right decisions. Meet the right people. And trust me, everything is going to pan out in the way you need it to pan out. And the way you want it to pan out. You just cannot give up. You got to keep going. I'm a testament of that. You know what I mean? I recently got my citizenship. I ain't had my citizenship for a long time. You feel me? I didn't. I, I, I recently got mine, so I feel good about that, you dig? But at the end of the day, it ain't changed nothing. I still was able to run circles around these niggas, man. You feel me? I was able to run circles around every nigga that I was around because my ambition. I wanted more. You feel me? And I came from the bottom. So I knew what that was like. And I knew I didn't want to go back there. You know what I mean? I used to have nightmares of waking up back in the Bahamas and being stuck. Like literally, I used to have nightmares of being deported and being stuck in the Bahamas because that's the last place I wanted to be because I was fueled with so much negative energy when I was there and I was getting in so much problems and so much things was happening. Man, I'm glad I'm not there today because if I was, I would have been dead or in jail. So when I go, I go to visit. I get back to friends and family. I shake hands. I kiss babies and I keep it moving. It's a beautiful place to be. But if you live there, it's a whole different experience. Now, when y'all go there on vacation, I know y'all have a good time. Y'all eat the conch. Y'all drink coconut water. You're going to beautiful beaches. You play with some of the beautiful girls out there. But if you live there, you'll understand it ain't all peaches and cream. It ain't all beautiful beaches and pink sand. You feel me? Trust me. It's niggas out there that's with the business. You know what I mean? And they'll take your head off, man. I call it Pirate City, man, because that's a place full of takers. You feel me? Any Caribbean island, that's Pirate City, man. You dig? We take whatever we want. That's why when I came to America, man, I was just scared to do nothing, man. I take what I want. I go out there and get it. Ain't nobody going to tell me no. I'm going to make it happen. You can tell me no seven times. I'm going to come back eight and I'm going to make you say, yeah, you can get it today. You can make it happen today. I'll give it to you today. I'm going to make it happen, man, no matter what, man. That's just that's the motivation I want to do. I want to give y'all motivation to let y'all know, man, y'all can make it happen, man. Yeah, who's going to motivate the motivators, man? I'm here to motivate the streets, man. That's what it's all about. You feel me? Like I said again, man, y'all got to engage in good routines, man. See, the problem is, like I said again, I, I, see, sometimes I get off, I get sidetracked, and I get, I go somewhere, and I have to come right back. Because I got so much to say. I got to go here, and I got to go there, and I got to come right back. Also, I want to let y'all know, man, a lot of niggas know more about their cars than they know more about their physical body. And that's a problem. How you know more about your car than you know about your physical body? You put 91 in that BMW. When you filling that up with gas, you put 91 in that BMW. But when it comes to your body, you put the low level type of food in your body. You don't fuel your body with good organic food. You don't mind going to Popeyes. You don't mind going to none of these fast food places because you don't value yourself like you think you do. Now, I know a lot of y'all think y'all love yourself. I know. I know. A lot of y'all think y'all love yourself. I know. Like I said again, you know more about your car than you know about your brain and your physical body. You feel me? Your brain is one of the most valuable thing on your body. Your brain gives you everything you have today. You dig? Why? Because everything was a thought. Before you have anything that you got in your life, you have to think about it first. 
right? Your brain is one of the most valuable things on your body. That organ that sits in your skull is very valuable and you know nothing about it. That's why you put so much of this bullshit inside of your body that causes you to have a lower vibration that hinders you from getting the things that you desire. See, I don't understand how you niggas know more about your cars than you know about your brain. See, it's a scientific fact that it takes 68 seconds of focused thought or you sending out a vibration in order for that vibration to stick and continue to emit even if you decide to stop thinking about that particular thing. I'm going to say that one more time because I don't think you niggas are really listening. Y'all not really grasping what I'm saying. It is a scientific proven fact that it takes 68 seconds of focused thought or sending out a vibration in order for that vibration to stick and to continue to emit even if you decide to stop thinking about that particular thing. That is a scientific fact and I guarantee you a lot of you niggas did not know that. That's why I need you to share my content. That's why I need you to put my content to every way you can put it, every way you can share it, every way you can just, just, you know what I mean? This is why, because I'm giving you the game that most niggas ain't giving you. They don't know what I know. That's why they can't give you the game. They don't read like I read. They don't do the research that I do. They don't study like I do. They don't do the due diligence like I do. So a nigga can't tell you what I'm telling you because they don't know it. Majority of these niggas don't know what I know. And pardon me for using the word niggas, but hey, I came up in the streets, man. This is how we talk. This is how, this is how I express myself. If you offended by the N-word, nigga, fuck you, bitch ass house nigga. You dig? I'm a field nigga. We say it like how we mean it. You dig? So let me get back to that. And I got to repeat it a third time because I know a lot of you be listening real slow. So I got to say it another time, man. It's a scientific fact. It takes 68 seconds of focused thought or sending out a vibration in order for that vibration to stick and continue to emit. Even if you decide to stop thinking about that particular thing. You dig? And let me go even further, which is not a scientific fact, but it's a fact nonetheless. 14 seconds of focused thought is equivalent to 2,000 hours of activity in terms of the universe working for you. I'm going to say that one more time, man, because y'all be listening too slow. Get your pen and your pass. I said this before, but I got to say it again because we got new subscribers. We got new people tuning in. You dig? If you haven't watched the old episodes, you need to because there's a lot of valuable game in there. But I got to give you this game too, man. I got to give you this game too. 14 seconds of focused thought is equivalent to 2,000 hours of activity in terms of the universe moving heaven and earth. For you to get what you desire. 14 seconds. If you can sit down and focus on your goals and your dreams for 14 seconds, man. And have the right amount of thinking. Have that positive thinking in your mind. You can achieve more than a person who's putting in more work and more hours than you. But they got the wrong thinking process. They're not thinking in the right way. Don't think positive. See, it's all about think and grow rich, not work hard and grow rich. That's why I'm stressing this. 68 seconds, oh man, forget about it. You focus on something for 68 seconds, man, you can stop focusing on that. That shit is already emitting in the ether and that's already out there. It's signed and sealed. Your gift or your thing that you want will be delivered long as you can stay in a positive mindset. See, y'all don't understand how powerful that is. The higher ups and the people that run this world, they know this. The information that I'm telling you is no secret. They know this. But see, y'all don't read nothing. Y'all don't do no research. Y'all don't educate yourself. So you miss the information. Nobody's hiding the information from you. You just not searching for it. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. You ain't ready. That's why you ain't got no teachers. You ain't got no mentors. Nobody giving you this game, man. The best y'all got is me. 
That's the best y'all got is me. And shit, y'all got a pretty good teacher if you really listening to me because ain't no nigga talking like me. You find a nigga on the internet talking like me, nigga, I'll give you $1,000, nigga. These niggas don't talk like me, man. These niggas don't got this type of confidence. These niggas ain't doing the type of research I've been doing. These niggas ain't working on themselves like I am. These niggas don't huh, put in that motherfucking, you dig? Put in that pain like I put in. So I could pop big shit because I put in the work. All you could do is hate on a nigga like me, but you can't affect me. Because whatever you say has no meaning to me. It's, it's meaningless. That's why I'm never affected by no comments or nothing somebody say underneath my profile picture or my videos that I post. Because... I'm putting good information out there, man. All these niggas is talking about fucking and sucking and all this other bullshit. You know what I mean? That ain't helping us move forward. That ain't helping us progress. Niggas talking all this nonsense. Just because they got a camera and a mic, they feel, hey, I want to be popular. I want some clout. So let me say the most stupidest shit known to man. And maybe people will start to like me. And people start to follow my content. You don't... See, they they missing the point. They missing the most valuable thing when it comes to creating content. You have to put out value. See, somebody might click and watch your bullshit-ass content for two seconds. But that don't mean they're going to follow you. They're not going to subscribe to your ideology. They're not going to want to watch you all day, every day. Because you putting out bullshit, nigga. You know what I mean? You ain't putting nothing out with substance. See, anything I drop and anything I put out, it got to be of substance. Or I'm not going to talk on this mic. Or I'm not going to say nothing. Everything I say, I stand on. And I believe and I follow through on everything I say, man. This is why niggas can't fuck with me, you dig? On no level. Pardon me, let me put my feet up. You dig? Don't y'all hate when niggas cross their feet and they cross their feet like this? All tight and shit? Them niggas is fugazi. <laughs> niggas are mad fugazi. Niggas that be crossing their feet and they be squishing their balls and shit. Pause. They be mad tight. Like, you know what I mean? Crossing their feet, man. Man, them niggas be super fugazi. Anytime I cross my feet, it's like this. I, you know what I'm saying? I give my motherfucking balls and dick room to breathe. You know what I'm saying? It's weapons of mass destruction down here. Pause for the... This is just for the ladies. You niggas take a break. It's weapons of mass destruction down here, you dig? So when I cross my leg, I always got to leave room for my shit to breathe, you dig? Because there's a lot of movement down there, you dig? But anyway, you know what I mean? I went off track for a second, but I'm right back. Like I was saying again, niggas cannot fuck with me, man. On no level. They don't know what I know. They don't do the research like I do it. You know what I mean? So they say a lot of nonsense with no substance and nothing to back it up. Like I said again, man, anything I say is concrete. Do your research. I've done it. Understand that 68 seconds of focused thought, man. Now, don't get it twisted. It's hard to think about something for 68 seconds. Don't think that shit is easy. It's not easy to think about something for 68 seconds. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. This is why they put so much things out there to confuse you, to have you distracted, so you can't be focused on nothing for 68 seconds. See, this is why you got to have a vision board. This is important because when you create a vision board, it allows you to think about something for longer than 68 seconds. Anybody that ever put a vision board together, you know it takes time. And in the process of you creating that vision board, what are you doing? You are focusing on this particular thing. You are focusing on a goal. So it allows you to put out a frequency and think about something longer than 68 seconds. For damn sure longer than 14 seconds. So you're getting a lot done just sitting and thinking about the things that you want to happen in your life. See, we are creative beings. See, the reason why a lot of people watched the movie The Secret and they was not able to manifest their goals, 
because they was missing the key ingredient. And that key ingredient is this. You don't attract nothing in your life. You create it. That's what you do. We, we are creative beings. Everything you have, you have created it in your life. And by you moving forward, trying to create something, putting movement and action behind your thoughts, that activates the law of attraction, which works like a magnet and costs whatever you want into your life to be pulled towards you. You understand? I hope that didn't go over your head. We are creative beings. We was put here to create. Everything you see today was first a thought. Even this couch I'm sitting on. Somebody thought about it first and then they start to take action and move in that direction to create this and make this a reality. Everything starts with focused thought. It's hard for niggas to focus. That's why they bring all of these, like I said again, man, I, I like to stress this because it's very important. It's hard for a lot of people to focus, man. It's so much distraction out there. A lot of people know more about cars, clothes, and everything else than they know about their physical body and their brain. They too occupied with all the material things of life, and that's okay. We need that shit. I like it. I know I need it. I want to shine on you niggas. I know I need it. That's why I get the Rolls Royce. Because I ain't scared of grown man <laughs> bills. A lot of you niggas scared of grown man bills. That's why y'all settle for the Camry. Y'all settle for the Honda. That's because you scared of grown man bills. You scared to take that risk. You really want the Rolls Royce. You really want the Benz. But you don't want to put yourself in debt because you scared that you are going to end up losing that car or losing that house or losing that thing that you want so bad. So you settle and you get the camera because you want to play it safe. We don't play nothing safe over here, man. We're going to motivate the streets. We're going to motivate the kids because when I was coming up, the D-Boys was driving the big bins and they was riding the motorcycles and they had the big chains on their neck. They was motivating the kids, man. You feel me? The reason I buy the big ass chains and big Cuban links and the fancy cars is because the dope boys that came before me, they was doing it, and I was motivated by that shit. So I, I want to motivate the next kid that's coming up that may see me in traffic, that may see me walk into a store or something or moving and grooving, and he see me and he say, damn, if he can do it, I can do it. See, I like to motivate the generation that's coming behind. See, a lot of you niggas are scared of these grown man bills. A lot of niggas can get some money, but they be scared to spend it. You know why? Because they scared they'll never make it again. I'm a true hustler, so whatever I can make today, I can make tomorrow. I don't give a fuck if I spend it all today. I can get it back tomorrow because you can't take my mind. My mind is where the treasure is at. That's where the gold is at inside of my mind. If I thought about it and brought it into my existence once, I could do twice and three times and four times and over and over and over again. Ain't nothing gonna stop this hustle. I motivate the motivators, man. The niggas you think are motivators, I motivate them. Oh, this ain't coming from no egotistical standpoint. I'm telling you how it is, nigga. The niggas you think that motivate you, I motivate them. I motivate the motivators. You feel me? The niggas that I'm around, they motivate me. I be around boss niggas that get to the bag. You feel me? My niggas motivate me. I don't look at TV and be motivated by celebrities. You know what I mean? I don't look at nobody on BET, MTV, YouTube. I don't care what they doing. They don't motivate me. The niggas that I'm around that's on this concrete and they making something out of nothing. They motivate me. The niggas that's in my circle, that's really putting in work that I can see with my eyes. Nobody on TV motivate me, man. You know how many people are working for these niggas? You know what I mean? You know how many gophers they got going for this, going for that? You know how many yes men they got making things happen behind the scenes? You feel me? So it's like they really not putting in the work. I mean, they putting in some work, don't get it twisted. Don't get it fucked up. They putting in some work, but they got a lot of moving parts around them to make these things happen. So it looks real good on TV. But they couldn't stand up to a nigga like me. Really feet on the pavement. Really out here touching hands and kissing babies. 
They can't fuck with a nigga like me, man. I don't pretend to be a hustler. I'm a hustler to the core. I love it. You dig? I love the hustle. That's why I ain't never scared. I could spend 150000 a day and don't break a sweat. Because I love the hustle. See, you don't like the hustle. That's why you don't. You can't do it once and twice and three times. You can't do it over and over again because you don't love the hustle. See, I love the hustle. I yearn for the hustle. Sometimes I want to go outside and just go hand to hand. I just want to, I just, I don't, I don't know why. I just want to touch the people. I want to go hand to hand. I like that hand to hand transaction. Now, I ain't got to always sell drugs. I ain't got to do none of that. I'm talking about hand in hand. I could be selling a bottle of water. I could be selling a, a gift card. I could be selling, I could be selling whatever. I could be selling candies. I could be selling gums. I could be selling shoes. I could be selling sneakers. I could be selling clothes. I like the hand to hand transaction. I like being on the corner. Sometimes I miss it. Yeah, sometimes I miss that shit. You feel me? I like to be in the field, really putting in the motherfucking work, man. I like that. That's just me. I like driving 20 hours just to go try to figure out if I could get some money in this particular state. I don't know nobody there, but I'm going to drive there and I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to meet some people and I'm going to make some connections and I'm going to make some money. You niggas are scared to leave your fucking block. How you going to get some money? You scared to leave your block. You stagnant. You limited in yourself. Know what I mean? I ain't never, I didn't give a damn if I had to drive 23 hours, 24 hours, 26 hours. I was going to drive to where I need to be to get to where I need to go, man. And I'm going for that bag. I'm a hustler for real. These niggas pretend to be hustlers, man. I'm the motherfucking hustler of the decade. Ask about me, man. Niggas don't get it like me. I get it out the mud, though. You dig? I get it out the mud. Niggas can't fuck with me on no levels. I'm feeling myself, baby. Pardon me. Pardon me, don't get mad, I'm feeling myself, it's just how I feel. You dig? I feel bad for you if you don't feel that way about yourself. You know what I mean? I feel bad for you if you don't feel that way about yourself, man. See, y'all gotta understand this, man. I came to America as a fucking immigrant, nigga. I didn't have to pot the piss in or a window to throw it out of, man. Nobody gave me nothing, nigga. I didn't have a passport. I didn't have an ID. I didn't have a social security card. Nigga, I had to make a way, man. I had to make a way, man. My first job was a dishwasher. Yeah, I felt like Scarface in that bitch, nigga. Yeah, I said if Scarface can do it, nigga, I could. My first job was a dishwasher working at Goodies. It's still there in Far Rockaway, Queens. If you go there right now, ask about me, they'll tell you I was in the back washing big pots, nigga. Doing it to the best of my ability, too. I didn't cry about it, nigga. I wasn't ashamed about it, nigga. I worked six days a motherfucking week, 12 hours a day, getting paid $5 an hour, nigga. That was the reality of my life. I came from nothing, nigga. What's your excuse, man? Huh? You niggas still complaining? Cause you niggas ain't got no hustle. You bitch made. You know what I mean? And then when I connected a few other people in that particular neighborhood, I said, man, fuck this dishwashing shit, man. Let me go over and try my hands in the streets and figure this shit out. On the block, hand in hand, touching people, making connections, kissing babies and shaking hands. Yeah, that was me, nigga. You feel me? No documentation, man. I didn't care though. I was living like an outlaw. Y'all know what it is, man. Like I said again, when you're an immigrant, man, you got the survival spirit with you. You're going to do whatever it takes to get to where you need to be because you don't want to go back home and look like a failure to the people that you left behind. See, it was different for me. I came up and went to high school in the Bahamas. So if I'd have got deported and went back home or be sent back home, that would have been a big embarrassment for me. And I'm a very prideful person. So I wasn't trying to be embarrassed. Because that would have been very shameful for a nigga like me. But now they're looking at me now. They're like, oh my God, he made it. We interrupt this program for a quick short commercial break. I know you're enjoying the content. But listen, I got to plug the book. 
the power of thought. This is something that you need in your life. You can think your way to a rich and prosperous life. It's your thoughts and your feelings that create abundance for you. Change your mind and you can change your life. I ain't trying to tell you what to think. I'm trying to teach you how to think. So get a copy of the book, The Power of Thought. If you don't got all day and you ain't trying to read a 300-page book, this is short and sweet. It's going to take you where you need to be. Also, for the people that don't read, I got the audio book as well. Everything is going to be in the description below. Support the book. Support the platform. Y'all know what it is. The Power of Thought. Yours truly. Look what can. Now back to the episode. Cheers. They looking at me like, God damn. Everybody trying to get next to me, man. Everybody trying to figure out what I'm doing, how I'm doing it. Everybody. But listen, man. Take it easy. I ain't looking for new friends. I'm not looking for new friends. If you didn't know me then, you ain't going to get to know me now. That's just what it is. I am not looking for new friends, man. Everybody in my DM want to connect. You know what I mean? Trying to do business. Man, I ain't trying to do business with some of you niggas, man. I don't know you niggas. I don't know y'all pedigree. I don't know what you're made of. I don't know your character. I ain't trying to find out, man. So if you don't see me responding to your DM, man, that's the reason, man. Because I ain't trying to get to know you niggas, man. All I got to do is stay far away from you sucker-ass niggas and I'll be good, man. I'm sucker-ducking all day and night, man. Pause. You feel me? Yeah, we ducking these suckers, man. You dig? I'm having fun, man. Listen, man. Also, I want to say this, man. Side note, man. Side note. I want to let you niggas know this, right? Stop chasing these women, man. I got to say this. This is very important. Some of the baddest bitches are the easiest women to fuck. All right? They are not that hard to smash like you think it is, man. They're very easy to smash. Stop chasing these women chase the bad because they only looking for niggas with certain status. See, some of the baddest women are the most insecure and shallow women out there, man. They're very insecure and shallow. Don't chase them. Chase the bad because once you get the bag, you put yourself in a certain bracket. They like men with certain status. See, that's why they could be with a rich, ugly ass nigga because he got a certain status. He in a certain tax bracket. Because women like a man with status. See, I know I'm handsome and all that, right? I'm very attractive. You dig? That's just what I am. I mean, God made it that way. Don't be mad at me. Be mad at him. If you got a problem with how I look, take it up with God. But they like me because I'm attractive. But the fact that I'm attractive and I got a certain amount of status and I'm in a certain tax bracket, oh, man, that make me the most sexiest man alive. You dig? Most definitely. And if you don't feel that way about yourself, you need to put yourself in a different tax bracket. You need to put yourself in a different status. You think I bought the Rolls Royce because I wanted to be <laughs> like you niggas? Nah, I bought it because I wanted to be in a different status. You know what I mean? When you buy certain material things, it's a status symbol. It separates you from the next man that's driving the Range Rover. Ain't nothing wrong with the Range Rover. If that's what you want. Ain't nothing wrong with the... S550 Benz, if that's what you want. Ain't nothing wrong with the BMW, you know what I mean? Six series, whatever series that you like. But I got the Rolls Royce because I want to be in a different tax bracket and I want to be in a different status than you niggas. And I want to make it a little bit harder for you niggas to catch up. I had to put a little bit space between us. See, the reason I cop the big chain is because I want to have a little bit of more space in between me and you. I want to make sure that the bitch know that we are not the same. You know what I mean? You got the little cube and I went and got the big one. What's the difference? $150,000 more. You dig? That's the difference. So when you go to my jeweler and you be like, yo, can I get the uh, liquid cash package? Can I get the liquid cash diamonds? You got to have liquid cash money. You got to have it, and you got to be ready to spend it. A lot of you niggas ain't true hustlers. That's why y'all scared to spend money. Y'all are petrified. When y'all spend money, y'all sweat. Y'all start stressing everybody out around you. You know what I mean? You're stressing out your girl. You're stressing out your, your, your employees. You're stressing out your workers. You're stressing out everybody because you just dropped the bag, and you're trying to get it back, and you're stressing everybody out. You're doing whatever you could just to try to get it back. You ain't a true hustler. So you got to spend it and know that you're going to get it back because you a hustler. And plus, you ain't spending it all there. You know what I mean? Whatever you're spending, that's just a little bit of... You know what I mean? Bread that you got on the side, you feel like you want to make treat yourself, then that's what it is. You know what I mean? You don't spend all your money 
just because you want to look fly and keep up with the Joneses. Nah, you don't do that. You don't try to keep up with the Joneses because the motto is to live below your means. You live below your means until you get to where you need to be. Then you start spending. Don't get it fucked up now. Like I said, again, I want to motivate y'all, but I want to send y'all in the right direction. I'm not going to just tell you anything because I got lips, man. You got to understand, man. Chase the bag, man. Stop chasing these females. I told y'all before, man. Most, some of the most beautiful women in the world are the most insecure and shallowest bitches in the world. They like men for status. You dig? If you got a high status in life, you're going to be able to track some of the baddest joints out there. You go to Arizona right now, man, there's a lot of women in Arizona that are beautiful. They don't even know they're beautiful. See, they got women out there that are gorgeous, right? And they don't even know they're gorgeous. They bad bitches, but they don't know it. That's how insecure they are. They look in the mirror and they get mad at themselves. They not happy with this. They not happy with that. And you thinking in your mind, you like, in your mind, you like, man, she's gorgeous. In her mind, when she looks in the mirror, she sees all her flaws. All her flaws. And she's very insecure behind closed doors. But when she come out in the public, she keeps her head high. She walk with a certain swagger to make you think, to give the perception that she's confident. But in all actuality, she's a very insecure young lady. And you putting her on a pedestal thinking that she's Nefertiti. Well, she's just a regular chick, man. Don't get scared. Don't be shy. You don't need no lick of courage to go speak to her. You don't got to get drunk and wasted to go speak to a female. Just walk up to her like a normal human being. Introduce yourself. Ask her for her name. You don't got to run no game. Just keep it plain and simple. You feel me? You don't got to brag and boast. Just keep it plain and simple. And trust me, you'll get further approaching a woman that way instead of trying to come with all this bullshit ass 19... 80s game trying to say the most slick shit nah that don't work in 2024 I get to where I want to get to with a female just by being straight up coming like a gentleman stating my name asking hers and starting the conversation from there you feel me you don't need no liquor courage like I said man I don't drink because I'm confident enough I'm aggressive enough as it is so I don't need no alcohol. I don't need nothing to talk to a female, man. See, that's the reason why a lot of women, I got to put y'all on game. See, that's the number one reason why a lot of guys, when they meet y'all, they want to, <laughs> let's go for a drink. The reason they want to go for a drink is they know if they get you drunk, you're going to make a bad decision. Because most people are careless when they drunk. So he know if he can get you drunk, <laughs> he could definitely smash. You dig? Because... You're not fully conscious of what you're doing. And he's going to take advantage of that. Yeah, I know I'm giving away the game, guys. I know, I, I know I'm giving away the game. But listen, man. The reason I'm giving away the game because some of you niggas need to step your fucking game up. You heard? Yeah. I'm giving away the game because some of you niggas got to step your game up. That shit is corny. You know what I mean? Y'all got to be more <laughs> confident and be more, you feel me, charismatic than that. See, a lot of you ladies don't understand this. When you drunk and you got liquor in your system, you're careless with your body, you're careless with your decision making. And he's more confident when he got liquor in the system because shit, if he's sober, he's a little bit more nervous. This is why he wanna take you for drinks. This is why he wanna say one more shot, one more shot. Can we do another shot? Can we do another shot? You got six shots in, he still ain't drunk. You know why? Cause he's used to doing this. You feel me? You got seven shots in and you still ain't drunk. You know why? Because you're used to doing this. Your tolerance is very high. Now he's coming in for the kill because he got you right where he want to have you. You know what I mean? You're sloppy. You're staggering outside the door. You know what I mean? He got to open the car door for you to get you inside of the car. Now he's taking you to the hotel or to the crib and he's knocking you down. You just got another body on your motherfucking checklist. You don't know this nigga name. You don't know this nigga date of birth. You don't know nothing about this motherfucker, you dig? But you know you just... Slept with this nigga, you gave him your body, you got another body count under your belt, you feel me? And you don't know nothing about this nigga, man. This is what goes on. It is what it is. I'm not judging, but this is how it goes on. 
This is what goes on in the streets. This is what goes on outside all day, every day. You know what I mean? It happens to a lot of y'all all day. Every, it's happening right now as we speak, man. Women having a multiple body counts with different niggas. And they don't even know these niggas' first names and last names. They don't know their date of birth. They don't know nothing about them. It was just a drunk night. She had a good time and she's enjoying life. But she got another body under her belt. This is life. It is what it is, man. Before I end this episode, I want to tell y'all a story about a wealthy father and his son, right? One day the wealthy father came home and he told his son, get dressed. I want to take you on a vacation. So the son being all excited, he ran upstairs. He took a shower, changed his clothes, got dressed, and he packed his bag. And he came running right back downstairs saying, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. The father said, calm down, calm down. Listen, we going on a vacation, but this ain't a regular vacation. It's going to be more like a field trip. I want to show you how poor people live. So we're going to spend a few nights with some people that live in a shack on a farm. You dig? And these are some people that we would consider to be poor. Now, they spent a few nights with this particular family, and when they got back, the father asked him, what did you learn on our trip? Well, the son replied and said, well, I noticed that we got one dog and they got four. I also noticed that we got a pool that reached the front of our garden. They got a creek that has no end. We got imported lanterns that light up our patio at night. They got stars that light up theirs. We got a small piece of land that we live on. They got a feel that goes beyond our sight. We buy our food, they grow theirs. We got servants to serve us, they serve others. We got a wall that surrounds our property to protect us. They got friends to protect them. And the father was shocked. He was like, wow, you learned all of that on your trip? And the son was like, yeah, I did. And I also want to thank you for showing me how poor we are. See. No matter what you got in life, there's always somebody doing better. And no matter how poor you are, there's always somebody doing worse. See, life is all about perspective. No matter how bad I was doing, I always doing better than somebody else because I always look at the glass always half full, never empty. You dig? The best things in life are free. A lot of the jewels you got is already inside of you. The best things in life are free, man. It's all about perspective and how you view things. I've always looked at things from a positive perspective. No matter what's going on in my life, no matter what chaos that I'm going through, no matter what I'm dealing with, I always look at it as a positive event. No matter what you got in life, man, there's always somebody doing better than you. There's always somebody doing worse than you. So you gotta be appreciative of everything. You gotta walk around with a spirit of gratitude. You gotta be thankful and grateful for everything you have in your life, no matter where you at in your life. You dig? You could be down on your ass right now, man. There's somebody out there that don't got a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of, man. You know what I mean? You might be down on your last buck. You know what I mean? Your rent due, your car note due. Your bills is piling up. You don't got nothing right now going for you. But you got to understand this, man. You got life. And because you got life, you can make tomorrow better than today. You always have an opportunity to make your life better than it was because you have life. Long as you're watching this content and you're able to listen to what I'm saying, you have another day and another opportunity to make something out of your life. Don't just settle and stay there and be on your face and just be complaining. Complaining never solves nothing. It don't make no sense to complain because most people are happy that you in that position. They rather it be you than them. So don't wait on nobody. Don't complain to nobody. Don't ask nobody for nothing and go out there and put your best foot forward and make something out of nothing. It's nothing for you to do that. You're born with the gift. Everything you need, you're born with. Understand your body, understand how it works. You understand? Put your best foot forward. Watch things that's gonna inspire you and motivate you. And another thing, man, I gotta let y'all know, 
You got to take care of your physical because if you look good, you feel good. A lot of people that I went to high school with, man, they got fat. They out of shape. They not, they, they not looking too good. You know what I mean? And I know y'all can relate. A lot of people y'all went to school with are out of shape. You know what I mean? They not looking their best. You feel me? That's because they got poor eating habits. I don't know how y'all let yourself go. I don't know how people do that. I don't know how people let themselves just go. You let yourself just go to waste. And then you turn around and you say you love yourself. You can't love yourself if you put all this toxic food in your body. You put all this poison in your body. And then you turn around and you want somebody to love you and you don't even love yourself. And I know you don't love yourself because look how you treat yourself. You put all the things in your body that's negative, that's doing harm to your body. But you expect to live forever. And when you reach 50 and 60, you got diabetes, you got cancer, you got fibro problems. And you don't know where it's coming from. It's coming from the food. It's coming from all the things you're putting in your body because it's not what you eat, but what you digest that makes you strong. You understand? Prevention is better than cure. That's a problem. We always wait till we in the hospital to want to change things. Ain't that some shit? A nigga find God real quick when he going through some hard times. Not understanding that you got to take God with you throughout the good and the bad. No matter what you going through, you always got to remain humble and take God with you. You dig? Don't be humble for nobody else. Don't be humble for the female that you with or the Niggas that you see, man, be humble for God. Anything else is uncivilized. You feel me? So like I said again, man, motherfuckers always want to find God when they going through a negative event. Take God with you through it all, man. Good or bad, you dig? They want to wait to eat right when they got an illness or a disease or something that's messing up their body. Then you want to be mindful of what you put in your body. I'm always watching what a female orders when we go out to a restaurant. If she order pork, that's a red flag. Ain't no woman could order pork around me, and I'm not even Muslim. If we at a dinner table and you order pork, you're not eating that in front of me. Matter of fact, if anybody's still eating pork in 2024, you might as well kill yourself, nigga. Get it over with. Why you wasting time? Just get it over with. Kill yourself, nigga. You ain't <laughs> good riddance. Because you already know what that's doing to the body, man. You already know ain't nothing positive coming out of that. You feel me? Now, I get it. Some of you niggas like steak and you like pork chops and you like, you know what I mean, all this different type of things. I get that. It tastes real good. But listen, if you love yourself, you're going to put only good things inside of your body. I don't understand how you can put 91 gas in that BMW, that luxury car that you drive, but you put the worst type of food inside of your physical body. You only get one of these vehicles. You don't get a second one. Once it's over, it's done. That vehicle that you like driving, you can buy multiple of those over and over. If one of your cars mess up today, you can go buy one tomorrow. If your body mess up today, it's going to be hard for you to get another one, baby. Now, coming up with technology, they might be cloning niggas in the next 30 years. But for right now, they not cloning niggas like you. You feel me? So you might as well take care of the body that you got today. Prevention is better than cure. Put the right things in your body, man. That's why I go to the gym and when I work out, man, I feel good. I feel alive. I feel like I'm ready to conquer whatever's in my way, man. I don't go to the gym because I wanted to be the biggest fucking muscular guy in the world now i go to the gym because i want to maintain a certain type of physique i want to maintain a certain type of stamina i want to have a certain type of endurance you feel me so if any adversity to come my way i'm up for the challenge i'm physically fit to face whatever if somebody violate my woman i'm physically fit to take care of that business right there and then i'm not gonna call police nigga i am the motherfucking overseer of my life and the people that's around me why am i gonna call police when i'm physically fit to take care of the situation now i'm not gonna throw my life away and do something stupid but i don't mind putting up these two hands and letting a nigga feel where my mind is at you dig that's just me I was born a fighter. I'm a natural fighter. Anybody that knows me, they know I've been fighting all my life. You might look at me right now and you see a pretty boy, but trust me, ain't nothing pretty about me, man, but my hair. You feel me? That's the only thing pretty on me is my hair. But other than that, man, I was born a fighter, man. 
That's why I can never stay down. I'm always striving to be great. I'm always looking to be great. I'm always looking to be my best because I'm a fighter. That's just who I am. This episode is longer than I needed to be, but it is what it is. I got a lot on my mind. I got a lot to say. This is what is going down, you know what I mean? And I'm having a good time, you know what I mean? I'm just having a great time. What y'all just vibing, you feel me? So like I said again, I think I cover it all, man. Take care of your body. Prevention is better than cure. It's not what you eat, but what you digest that makes you strong. Don't let none of this shit go over your head. I told y'all before, niggas not giving you the content I'm giving you. They not saying the things that I'm saying because they don't know the things that I know. Niggas don't do the research that I do. Niggas don't do the studying that I do. Niggas is not dedicated like I am. I am dedicated to be a better version of myself every day. I have a magnificent obsession with becoming and being a better person. Nothing going to stop that. Nothing is going to get in my way because I love me. I love myself. I love who I am. I love the man that I've grown to be because I was not like this 20 years ago, 10 years ago. I was a different human being. But I'm growing and I'm evolving every day and every way to be a better version of me. That's what you need to do. If you say you love yourself, if you truly, genuinely, in your heart, really love yourself, give yourself the best things in life because you deserve it. Nobody else but you. Anyway, like I said again, it's yours truly, Liquid Cash. I need it all out the stats. Like, subscribe, click the notification button, and tell a friend and tell a friend that Liquid Cash got a podcast. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah, it's the Pirates of the Caribbean. Niggas can't fuck with me, man. That boy. It's liquid that cash, boy. I need it all out the stash. I'ma get rich or I'ma get deported Riding cross country, my four Taurus 